Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and <clears throat> excuse me, we are in the book of Hosea as we go through the Bible for the fourth time here on Scripture Verse by Verse, the fourth time in the last 35 years. Hosea chapter 12, verse 1. Now, you can study all four of those series. They're all archived for you at the Bible versebyverse.com. So choose the series, the book of the Bible, the section, the chapter, click and listen. That's all that you have to do. And all you need to bring is your Bible. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephraim feedeth on wind and followeth after the east wind. He daily increaseth lies and desolation, and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried into Egypt. So if you're one who chases the wind like Israel did, you're just a little bit insane. What a waste of energy to chase the wind. And often Israel turned her back on God, and that is exactly what she did. She wasted her energy. Sin is bad because it's bad. Sin is bad because it is appalling to God. It is evil. But sin is also bad because it's a complete waste of time and you can never retrieve those wasted minutes. It is chasing the wind. Two, the Lord hath also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings will he recompense him. Now, <clears throat> remember, Judah was the southern kingdom. Ephraim is a reference to the northern kingdom. So God has an issue with the south, too. God and his people will meet in the Lord's eternal courtroom. He has, a, he has charged them with serious crimes. Look at three. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spoke with us, even the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is his memorial. And he's talking about the man, Jacob. And you probably picked up on that if you have been studying with me through the Old Testament. Jacob was the father of God's people, Israel. In fact, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And that's why the nation became known as the Israelites. So Jacob was the father of God's people, Israel. And, well, like father, like descendants, like father, like son, the father was always bucking God until he learned the hard way that it doesn't pay. And his descendants, the nation Israel, will learn the same painful lesson in the same painful way. Six, therefore, Turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and justice, and wait on thy God continually. There's one way for Israel to get out of the jam that they've gotten themselves into as a nation at this point. Number one, they have to start treating God as God. Number two, they have to start being good to their fellow man. Seven, he is a merchant the balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. 
So Israel was trying to achieve greatness by deceit and cheating, dishonest business deals, dishonest politics, always trying to get ahead as if God wasn't watching and wouldn't hold them accountable, just like he does today, my friends. Eight and Ephraim said, yet I am become rich. I have found substance in all my labors. They shall find no iniquity in me that is sin. Israel's wealth, and she got wealthy through her deceit, through her unscrupulous, sinful ways. And what a fool, what a fool, because Israel's wealth gave her a false sense of assurance. I got plenty of money in the wallet, so I must be okay. Nothing wrong with me. Rather than using the word of God as the standard to judge herself, she used her bank account. Nine, and I that am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles as in the days of the solemn feast. Israel is smug because they are wealthy, so God will make them poor in order to wake them up. Verse 10, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets, God gave Israel plenty of warnings. He spoke through the prophets. 11. Is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are vanity. They sacrifice of old bullocks in Gilgal. Yea, their altars are like heaps in the furrows of the fields. The Israelites used their pagan altars to cry out to their idols for protection and prosperity. But God is, God is going to destroy those altars, which should set off alarms in Israel's mind. <clears throat> Twelve, and Jacob fled into the field of Aram, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. Now he's back talking to talking about about Jacob here, Israel's progenitor, the father of the Israeli race, Jacob, deceived his brother and consequently fled from his home to avoid being killed. And while up in Aram, he worked seven years to pay for a wife. Thirteen. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Just as Jacob cared for his father-in-law's flocks, God cared for his people in the wilderness between Egypt and the promised land. Through his shepherd Moses, he cared for them. 14, Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him and his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. God treated Israel well, but Israel responded by sacrificing her children to her false gods and by killing God's prophets who gave him, who gave them the word of God. And God must punish, and he will punish such blatant and repeated rebellion, hideous sins, Let's go into chapter 13 a little bit. When Ephraim spoke, trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. Ephraim, at one time, was the most powerful section of the northern kingdom. But it lost its greatness when it abandoned God for idols. Verse 2, and now they sin more and more and have made them melted and cast images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding. 
all of it, the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Well, once they tolerated rebellion, once they began to tolerate rebellion, the umbilical cord to God was severed and the restraining influence of the Holy Scripture was gone also. And that led to the most depraved sins imaginable, even the sacrificing of their own children to their false gods. Three, therefore, they shall be like the morning cloud and like the early dew that passeth away, like the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and like the smoke of the chimney. In other words, Ephraim's going to vanish. Like smoke blowing in the wind, they're going to vanish. Once so prominent, once so wealthy, once so glorious when she walked with the Lord, she will vanish <clears throat> because of her sin. For yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. God hasn't changed. Israel has changed. She has left God. But that doesn't change God. God still is who he is. Five, I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. God never wronged his people, never. He had compassion on them. He cared for them during hard times. Six, according to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled and their heart was exalted. Therefore, have they forgotten me? Instead of bowing before God for his goodness to them, they became proud of their prosperity as if they had accomplished all these wonderful things on their own, forgetting God completely. And that's always the first step to apostasy. I'm saying forgetting God is the first step to apostasy. <clears throat> Seven, therefore, I will be unto them like a lion, like a leopard, by the way, will I observe them. Instead of being their provider and protector, he will be like a lion, ready to pounce on them and devour them as prey. Eight, I will meet them like a bear that is bereaved of her whelps and will tear the fat of their heart and there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. A bear robbed of her cubs is not an understanding creature. A bear who has been robbed of her cubs is not in an understanding mood. She is fierce and she's ready to destroy whatever is in front of her. And God says, that's what I'm like when judgment day comes. Like a bear robbed of her cubs, I'm not very understanding. I'm just fierce and ready to destroy, and I will, and he will. He will destroy, not annihilate, not eliminate, but absolutely kill physically and send their souls to hell for eternal torment, a destroyed, wasted life, not annihilation. No, annihilation is not taught in Scripture anywhere. People in hell wish there would be annihilation, but there isn't. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for the Word of God. Also, when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, click the Donate button at the top of the front page and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. And don't forget to study the whole Bible with me verse by verse at thebibleversebyverse.com. All you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. And until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.